And uh, then uh, the next year, I decided that I wanted to be a nurse. And so I went and training at the university and at Michigan and Hospital. And enjoyed it. I enjoyed nursing very much, but I hated training. <laughs> Were your parents supportive of your being a nurse? My mother was, but my mother was the family. My, and, uh, but that didn't make any difference. She she kept me going, and, and I, well, I had one brother that was was supportive too. My middle brother. So and was it kind of unusual for women to do things against their family's wishes? Well, uh, I more or less always had a mind of my own. <laughs> I decided that's what I wanted to do, and I was going to do it uh, regardless. Well, the first year I went was in training. Uh, I was sick a lot and got pretty far behind in my studies, so I went, gave up at the end of the probationary period and went home and spent the next, the next year at home. But I was still determined I was going to be a nurse, and so the next year I never told anybody, I just, except you know, a couple of girlfriends, I made all the arrangements to go back and train in that fall. And I didn't tell my parents until a week before I was going to ready to leave. And of course, I had, had all my books and my uniforms and everything from the year before, so I didn't have to make any extra preparations until about it. My, uh, after I graduated from high school, I worked in the soda fountain in Slavitech uh, in the summertime from 6 in the evening till 12. And it was really just a lot of fun because there were six teenagers. It was a big, a big place, and uh, we met a lot of the summer people. And just generally had a good time. And training was hard, a lot of work, and long with long hours. And we had to really keep our nose to the grindstone. But it was, I was very happy with it and thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I worked for two years after I graduated. And in the meantime, I had met uh, this young man from Niagara Falls, New York, and we decided that we were going to get married. But uh, he wasn't through school yet, and his parents were very much against our being married before we went through school. How did you meet? On a blind date that I very much was very much opposed to going out on. <laughs> but I, I liked him the first time I saw him, and he did meet. So. Went, and we had a wonderful time in those two years. Can you say something about how we proposed to you? And it was that the, we were married in June, and the depression, uh, the stock market crashed in you know, October. But he did have promise. He had worked at the carbides in the summertime, so he had the promise of a job there when he got to school. So he never was without work, but uh, it was part time uh, at, during the depression a lot of the time. And, uh, but we kept our heads above water. Incomes were very low, but we managed to keep uh, within them and have two children. Um, Backtracking a bit, I was widowed at 43 and had, two, had both children still in college, so I went back to nursing and uh, worked at nurse, in nursing until I retired. In so you had stopped nursing for a while? I didn't work all the time. I was, all the time I was, uh, after Bob got to school, I didn't work at all until uh, <coughs> after he died. Because he didn't feel that it was right for, for me to work. He wanted me to stay at home and take care of the, the family, and that he felt that it was his duty to support the family. So this is one person that you listened to? I had no, we didn't have too much choice. It would have been uh, very, he would, he would have been very upset. In fact, he always said that, okay, if you if you go back to work, then I'll quit and you can support the family. <laughs> and, uh, but I, because I thought it would hurt his pride so much, I didn't insist upon it at all. And, but we were managing all right. But after he died, I had to go back to work, both uh, financially and emotionally, because of, I was so very lonesome with both children away in school and uh, all by myself. So that if I hadn't gone to work, it would have been very difficult. But that mother was wonderful. And uh, she had an incumbent cervix, and they put a first thing in. And then she had a couple, uh, 
proved to me years later, she said, a perfectly normal little boy. Because he was charming, he was lovely. No problem with him at all. So when the kids were old enough to go to school, the mother was so impressed with the care that Kirsten had had in the nursery that she went in training. And she is now working in the intensive care nursery. <laughs> But it's so great that I thought it was you terrific. You never know when you help people what's going to happen. It, it, well, I've often wondered about Kristen and um, how she was doing. And, cause she was the kind of a preemie that you would expect not to be uh, completely normal. And she did have some eye problems. And she did have some neurological problems, but they cleared up. I think she had some surgery on her eyes. And... Uh, but when you think of two pounds and uh, and then getting a scholarship for, for college. An athletic scholarship, yeah. Did you write back to her? No, no she was in Seattle. I talked to her. I called her on the phone. Thank you for, for it. But uh, so that was was just great. When it came, I thought, he's getting married now. <laughs> Before I opened this, does that look like a wedding? You have a varied experience in the Girl Scouts. And they all count for you do go to work for money. No, it didn't have any bearing on, <laughs> on nursing at all, I don't think. Well, I don't know one thing that you had to run Dr. Clark's office for him, right? And you oh, that fancy work. Yeah, that wasn't right his office, was Sorry, this was the bookkeeping and the paperwork. But that's the best of the worst part of books to anything these days. And I worked hard, but I worked really good. I but I enjoyed it. Yeah. I made a lot of friends. Okay. He was easy to work. He was nice to work for. This man that I worked for in Seattle was very easy to work for, but it was boring. And that's when you went back and took the education and training to then I, the, the, well, no, well I went back uh, then I I couldn't stand that place so I, I stood it for four years and I figured I just worked four years I worked there four years and I just I still disliked it as much as I did when I started it was time to get out so I quit and that's when I went in the nursery working. And then when I had a chance to go to the nursery I thought that'd be great and this uh, superintendent of nurses called him to ask him if he thought I'd make a good nursery nurse. And he said, she might as well. I've never in my life seen anybody so crazy about kids. Yeah. So. But you did have to go back to school at some point, right? Well, that was later. That was after I went to group health. That, uh, then they sent me back to take the, the premium course. And uh, how long was that? Um, it wasn't too long. I think a couple weeks was long. Oh, well, I thought you had to really go. No. Well, I did, but it was. It was quite intensive. But oh, course, it wasn't. It was like all day. Oh yeah. Oh, I was thinking we went evenings for a long time. Or something. No, 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 no. It was a big deal. Uh, and um, and as I say, it was very good. I really learned a lot. But of course, by this time, I had worked quite a bit in the nursery too, so that I had a uh, full background and knew what I wanted to learn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we had very good instructors. Group discussions, and, uh, and we actually worked in the premature nursery in the university, and it was only equipment that we didn't have, didn't have at that time, but that we got later. I guess the other thing that you got called back. To well, then they, then they had the yeah, they had the nursing strike, and, and uh, they called me back asking if I worked for all nights, and I did, and uh, that was the most gratifying thing <laughs> that ever happened to me because other times because I was in charge and there were times when uh, I thought everybody hated me and I did have some help that was anything but help. They were just troublemakers. And when you're as busy as we were and you had the responsibility for all the brand new babies and sick babies, uh, you don't want to be bothered with that sort of thing. You need help that's going to you can depend on and uh, cooperate and I didn't always have it. So, as I say, there were times when I thought everybody hated me. And, uh, but when I went back, 
this night. I never got so many hugs and welcomes in all my life as I did that night. But the thing that uh, I thought was the nicest was the, you know, the doc, both the doctors and the nurses. And one of them said to me, she said, well, you know, nobody's ever appreciated until they aren't there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, this one girl that had worked for me was working nights. And when she came on duty, she said, oh, am I glad to see you. All this time I have wondered where you were, what you were doing, how you were. And I missed you. And she said, you know, you were in a tight ship, but I learned more from you than anybody else I ever worked with. And I thought that was one of the nicest compliments I ever had. And the other thing is, do you have any idea in all those years how many little baby lives you saved? Just as many, many as we per month. Many? Just just as many as we possibly could. And it was hundreds. And sometimes we weren't so fortunate. Yeah. And but I think the nursery is probably the happiest. I think labor uh, that uh, maternity is the happiest part of nursing that you can have. It's the happiest part of the hospital. Yeah. But when you have a tragedy, it is a real tragedy. And it's really sad. Yeah. But the I don't think the percentage was very high. And we saved a lot of them. Some of them we even saved that we weren't supposed to. Yeah. Well, what was the smallest one that you ever had? Was it the yeah, the other yeah, two found it was the smallest. Mm -hmm. Just graduated from the University of Arizona on an athletic scholarship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. And we had another one that was really interesting. Just before, she went home just before Kristen was born. Uh, she weighed two pounds and two ounces, but she was born in the toilets across the lake in Bellevue on a Sunday night. The parents had just bought a station wagon, and they had put a mattress in the back of it so that the mother could rest in there, and they were going on a camping trip. They had another uh, boy older than this little girl. and uh, the they were going on the uh, camera trip on Monday morning. And on Sunday night, this little gal was born in the toilet. Father picked her up and picked her and mommy up and put them on the back of the station wagon, put her in the shoe box, uh. <laughs> and I tell her to the hospital. <laughs> he was so excited he couldn't find the emergency entrance. <laughs> but he finally, finally got, him with the, got her to the hospital. And uh, it was, and she was, she was a pretty good little fucker, but she was so tiny. And all I could think of when I went to fish was an old lady because some of these prematures have the white hair on their face, like old ladies do. No. <laughs> and every time I go to fish, she says, "Where my cheeks?" Because <laughs> her cheeks are all fucking. <laughs> She made it. So that mother kept in touch with me for a long time. Yeah. Oh, no, you've always had pictures. Yeah. All your babies. I've got a lot. Of, not all of them, but I've got a lot of them. Yeah. Your grandchildren and great grandchildren. And yep. All the rest of your babies. My rogues gallery. Yeah. So maybe you've answered one of the questions that I was thinking about asking, which was that it sounded like you had to really push in order to go into nursing. It wasn't necessarily an easy thing that you had a lot of support. Well, from. I didn't. No, I didn't get a lot of support from. My mother was really the, the only one that really supported me. And then my brother came to my rescue, and he'd send me some money once in a while. And he was uh, not. He was in favor of it. He wasn't didn't object to it. But my older oldest brother, my sister was very indifferent. But my oldest brother and my father were very much against my life. So I was going to ask they what... They want me to be a dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the compulsion? What, what allowed you to have such strength to go into it? Well, uh, I'd always been... Uh, when, when I was just uh, a little girl, I couldn't have been more than eight or nine years old, I read uh, The Life of Florence Nightingale. And I thought, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? That's what I'd really like to do. But I didn't think I had... didn't really think I had any possibility of doing it. Uh, and I didn't really have any idea just how to go about it until uh, one day when I was working in this uh, soda fountain, there was a girl that came in who was in training 
at you, ma'am. And we were talking about it. And I said, oh, I think that's wonderful. He said, well, why don't you do it? And I said, oh, how could I? How would I go about it? So she told me. She said, send in your application. Did it cost anything at all, or did they pay me? Or, or? Uh, yes, I don't remember. It was a, uh, no, they didn't pay us. There was a small fee that we had to pay. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very much uh, every year. And they placed our uniforms and our shoes and our books. And you were poor. Yeah. And, uh, and you were very hard for it. And then uh, we didn't first two months, we just had classes, and then we went on the boards at, for the, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for two hours uh, to do evening care. And I'll never forget this one time, I, think I had a little four-bed men's ward to give in evening care, because they were supposed to wash their faces, and we rubbed their backs, and they brushed their teeth. And if they didn't have teeth, we were supposed to make uh, applicators for them to clean their mouth through. Or no, if they didn't have a toothbrush, we were supposed to make little applicators for them to clean their teeth with and clean their mouth with. And so uh, I asked this one man, old man, he was in my high school, 60, 70. He was an old man, I mean, at that time. Uh, he had a toothbrush. So I very busy and made him a lot of that. And some applicators and so gave him some mouthwash. And these other three men were just washing me so closely, never saying a word. And the man didn't have any teeth. <laughs> and they just howled. Not one of those four men said a word. But they just howled and I didn't know what to I was about to yay. Yeah, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. But those are the things.